circular quay. It's beautiful. It's vibrant. It's at the forefront of Sydney Harbour. It's the ferry and cruise gateway to ports all across the harbour and the Parramatta River. It's just a quick walk away from the Harbour Bridge, from the Botanic Gardens, from the Opera House, from the rest of Sydney CBD. It's bustling. It's alive. But it has just one problem. The Kyle Expressway. The Carl Expressway crosses over Circular Quay via a massive bridge, and it's an eyesore. It's ugly, it's unpleasant, and it casts a literal shadow over the beauty of Circular Quay. In response, Premier Dominic Perrette has pledged to turn the expressway into a green space under plans to take Circular Quay to the next level. But City of Sydney Mayor Clover Moore has even bolder plans to demolish the expressway altogether. So, what should we do? Keep the expressway open, pedestrianise it, or tear it down? Stick around to find out more. Welcome to Building Beautifully. The Carl Expressway serves the important purpose of getting traffic from Sydney's north to Sydney's south, and has done so since it opened in 1962. But the Sydney Harbour Tunnel, which opened 30 years later in 1992, serves the exact same purpose, and has for almost 30 years now, only its route is shorter. For decades since the Harbour Tunnel opened, and even before that, the community has been advocating for the controversial expressway to be torn down over Circular Quay. Its massive structure gives a sense of separation between Circular Quay and the rest of the city, towering over all underneath it. It's redundant, ugly, useless. Consequently, the City of Sydney's Mayor Clover Moore recently proposed tearing down the expressway completely. She's also proposed removing the railway line. While its bridge is not quite as wide or ugly as the expressway, it's definitely still an eyesore. It's the only elevated station in all of Sydney CBD, other than Central Station. Thus, her proposal sees the railway also being removed, moved underground, finally eradicating those massive eyesores of Circular Quay. Under her plans, a ferry wharf would also be removed to make way for a public square. Her vision is a beautiful one. Finally, the Carl Expressway wouldn't completely divide Circular Quay from the rest of the CBD. Pedestrians would no longer feel suffocated by two massive bridges. They'd be in a place open to the air, open to all. You see... Circular Key is so close to realising its full potential, and the city of Sydney realises that. Circular Key has spent the last few decades being slowly transformed into the pleasant pedestrian plaza that it is today. It's at the forefront of the Sydney Opera House, as well as the Museum of Contemporary Art and the Botanic Gardens. The area is home to a large cruise terminal, the biggest ferry hub in Sydney, its own train station, bus connections, and even light rail. Light rail to Circular Quay opened fully in 2020, which saw parts of Alfred Street closed to cars, allowing pedestrian traffic in the area to blossom, to really come alive. That's the thing with modern city planning. It prioritises pedestrians, and that's exactly what it should do. Circular Quay mostly already wins in this regard, it's very accessible by foot, it's got amazing public transport access, and it's filled with plenty of restaurants and entertainment. The key comes alive during Sydney's famous Vivid Festival. Actually, that's exactly why I was in the city the day I filmed this. Back when the Carl Expressway was planned and built, city planners thought differently. Cars weren't seen as pieces of metal capable of slowly destroying our environment, and expressways weren't seen as eyesores. No doubt, planners thought they were doing motorists a favour when they built the Carl Expressway. 
The expressway has amazing, unparalleled views of the Sydney Harbour. There's a quote in the Pixar movie Cars that I feel really applies here. Cars didn't drive to make a great time, they drove to have a great time. But now, not many people would dream of driving specifically to have a great time. Well, fine, I would. But I'm not the average motorist. I literally make these videos instead of studying for uni. But back then, people did drive to have a great time. Driving was fun. Expressways were beautiful. But they're just not anymore. The Carl Expressway is a remnant of a forgotten time. A forgotten way of thinking. Where cars were king and pedestrians came in second. In an era of climate change, we need to be discouraging car journeys. Not promoting them. And that can only come by closing and tearing down the Carl Expressway. Slight problem with the city of Sydney's plans though. They are very expensive. In fact, Clover Moore's proposal would probably cost in upwards of one billion dollars. In a post-pandemic era, where our government is in debt, where countless transport projects are being delayed, it's hard to imagine our government prioritising destroying a road instead of building new ones. Clover Moore's proposal is the ideal one in my eyes, and it's the one I'd choose if money was not a problem. It pains the inner city planner in me to say this, but the real world requires real solutions, not idealistic ones. And simply put, our government just can't afford this proposal right now. And so, I now move on to the New South Wales government's recently announced alternative plans to turn the Carl Expressway into a greenway. The expressway would be reduced from four lanes to two lanes, with viewing platforms installed to allow pedestrians to gaze out at the beautiful Sydney Harbour. The ferry wharves and train station would be renovated, green space would be revitalised, whatever that means, and the pedestrian area of Circular Quay would be widened, with seats added. A great area taken to the next level, attracting visitors and tourists from all over. Well, sorta. Let's be real. What these plans represent is a paint job. Slap a coat of paint on the problem and hope that people will forget it was ever there to begin with. And it isn't a cheap paint job either. $216 million. And that's just for more planning. Worst of all, the problem wouldn't even be fixed by a bit of paint, even though it'll be decorated in some trees and used by pedestrians instead of cars. The massive Carl Expressway eyesore will remain over Circular Quay, and worst of all, because the expressway isn't planned to be fully closed, it will still continue to unnecessarily attract loud, dirty vehicular traffic. I'll admit it. The designs look beautiful. It's just, it sure is an expensive way to not even solve the problem at hand, namely the scar of the Carl Expressway, as Dominic himself put it. So we're in a bit of a pickle. We could tear down the expressway. That would get rid of the circular key eyesore once and for all, levelling the area up beyond the amazing potential it's already met. The only problem is, we can't afford it. We could renovate the expressway into a greenway instead. That would truly transform Circular Key, and it would be cheaper. Unfortunately, it's still expensive, and ultimately it leaves the Carl Expressway behind as an ugly eyesore. Or we could do nothing, which has no benefits and leaves everyone a loser. Unfortunately, nothing is exactly what has already been happening for years now, and it's what business owners fear will continue to happen. Business owners have been frustrated time and again by our government's inaction on Circular Key. Indeed, they've been met with no less than five announcements in five years to do something about the area, to no avail. Business owners want certainty, and they haven't gotten that. Circular Key is an area that has 
almost realized its full potential. But that's the problem. Almost isn't complete. Ah, the Carl Expressway problem. I wish I had a solution, I really do, but I don't. With Dominic Perrottet's plans the most likely to push ahead, I don't think that's much of a loss. At least Circular Key will be transformed. At least something will happen. Well, maybe. Hopefully. In the meantime, the Carl Expressway looks like it will remain sitting over Circular Key for years, or maybe even decades to come. A remnant of a forgotten era. If you like this video, please do consider liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching.